Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am doing a small video that I've been meaning to get around to doing, uh, which is my own uh, way of working Paint Tool Sci, which is a very, very robust, but uh, in some regards, a fairly simple art program that uh, is available for both there's there's some some versions that are available for I believe uh, Macintosh, but the one I'm using right now is for Windows. So I I'm not a hundred percent sure whether or not it is uh, usable for Windows. But I'm going to go a little bit about how how I I use Paint Tool Sci. Now the first thing to say is like every tool that you give to an artist, if you give a pencil to twenty different artists you'll see 20 different variations of how they use pencils. Each one has their own unique way, their own unique style, and even then, it's a matter of how they decide to use it at the moment. So, this is by no means any kind of um, uh, tutorial on how you should use Paint Tool Sci. It's just how I d uh, choose to use it. So, we'll go... Um, picture, I guess, if I can time. Now, when you make a new canvas, there's a couple things to keep in mind. Um, resolution, it's usually good to have it anywhere from 600 to 300. Right now, for my work, I use um, a, a resolution of, of 600. Um, why? Because the detail is much more crisp. And you'll also notice that in Psi, when you change things like that, uh, like the resolution here, you're going to actually notice it in the brush strokes and how they interact. It's going to look different. It, the, the pens that you've created will feel different based on the resolution you have. Uh, it's better to go up, I, in my opinion, but if your computer has a hard time handling it, you can turn the, uh, the resolutions down. But uh, for the purpose of this video, as well as for my work, I will go with 600. I also like to have large pictures. When I first started working with Psy, and a lot of the videos that are on YouTube um, are actually quite small. I, uh, at that time, I usually did up to 2,000, 2000 width by maybe 1,500 uh, height. Uh, it's just a personal preference at that point. I think it was a matter of how confident I was. Um, the, the more uh, skill I attain with um, with Psy, the better I become with it, the the larger the pictures seem to become. And so at this point I am to 3000 height and 5000 width. That allows for very large pictures that have a lot of detail and um, the brushes tend to be smaller but uh, still uh, fantastic to use. So for the purpose of this video I will also run it that way, although I might flip the the canvas, we'll see. So once we have that started, uh, the reason I choose to this resolution is because it fills my screen for the most part, as you can see. The um, when I zoom in, it it fills in almost the entire um, art um, spectrum of this screen. I have a um, a widescreen monitor, which is standard for most monitors. Um, however, I notice I tend to do uh, thinner pictures as my monitor is uh, the resolutions change. So the wider the the monitor or the display, the wider the pictures tend to be. And I really like wide pictures, so uh, I try to keep it that way. Now, the first thing to go over is that whenever you're working any kind of program, it's important just to get used to it. Um, Psy comes with uh, a series of basic uh, basic um, brushes and each one does something different. Um, the pencil I like to uh, consider it a pen rather than a pencil because it gives a nice uh, pen effect. Uh, in some ways it reminds me more of uh, a permanent marker than a pen because uh, pens tend to uh, tend to bleed the longer you spend in the time while this it's a matter of how hard you push will change the size of the stroke 
Now, um, I went through and, and played with each of these different brushes until I got used to them. And then I began to make small adjustments to fit my style and my needs. I recommend the same thing. Get used to the brushes, figure out what they do, um, incorporate each one, but then don't don't hem yourself in. Don't don't keep yourself to just those brushes. Start exploring and trying new brushes. There are many, many tutorials. There are fantastic brushes, brush types that you can download for Psy. The one thing I have to say is Psy, this is this is one of the weaknesses that I find with Psy that I, I don't necessarily enjoy as much that uh, you won't find in, in Photoshop and Illustrator and such. The brushes are stagnant. They stay stay in one direction. So let's let's take an example. I have right here a woody effect, as you can see. Now when I apply it will give this this uh, design. There's multiple ones but uh, the this is what it is. Now when I mean what I mean by stagnant is regardless of which direction I brush the stroke it will always be the same image overlaid in grid form so you don't get um, a lot of variation from different uh, brushes while say in Illustrator you could have a brush type that would look like this and as you change the direction you were brushing it it would change um, the rotation of the brush uh, image, which you know, I mean, um, isn't isn't the worst thing, but uh, I I think it's uh, one of the drawbacks of Paint Tool Sci. Um, I wish that uh, the brushes would rotate with the brush stroke. Um, I'm not exactly sure if there's ways to um, mod Paint Tool Sci. I haven't looked it up. And if there is ways to mod Paint Tool Sci, then that would make a huge difference in uh, the program, I believe, uh, for myself at least. But for the most part, I rarely use these uh, these other effects like uh, bristle, the brush, uh, the rust, the splotch, smoke. All these are different ones that I I made, but I rarely use them. For the most part, I use one that I actually um, adjusted myself, which is the marker. Uh, I took the standard marker and I did small changes to it here in the advanced settings. As you can see, they're they're actually quite a bit different. The all the settings, the this is very uh, edge shaped, and I actually use this a lot. So I use both of these different markers. I tend to switch back and forth. And I only use pencil for um, either designs, overlays, or um, for inked style artwork. So an example of that would be, whoops, an example of that would be this, uh, ink style. So as you can see, uh, pencil, uh, pen each stroke acts more like a uh, a pen so yeah this would be an example of using the the pencil but for my sketches i i tend to switch between these depending on my mood actually uh recently i've been preferring using the marker because it produces a lot more um soft edges which uh allows for uh less rigid um uh, uh, sketches. I like using the markers um, instead of like say the pens because it allows for me to have that effect that you would with say a pencil where the harder you push or the longer you spend in an area drawing over and over and over again the darker it becomes. Same concept with the pencil in the way that I use it. Um, I'll sometimes go over something lighter and then go over it again darker uh, to to give different shades to the the sketch itself. So let's say I had a picture I wanted. Uh, depending on the importance of the line, uh, I may go back and produce thicker lines. Um, it might help me to uh, do artwork over the top of lines that I've established for the the uh, the sketch.
So it's I find this extremely helpful to uh, use my uh, what I call the trusty marker, which is simply a modified marker brush. So I it, very important that you that you um, figure out what you want out of the program, and then mess around with the the different uh, markers and create brushes that. Uh, form to you instead of you forcing yourself to form to the uh, the different mediums. Just as I would say um, different tools, I prefer I prefer in traditional art I prefer certain tools and I exclude other ones while other artists may prefer other tools. I don't use charcoal that often because I find it very messy. I love pencil but I've always used pencil so to each his own in that regard. Now, um, along with this tutorial, there comes the the question, well, how do you use your different brushes? How would you, say, draw a picture? Um, I think it depends on what kind of picture I'm, I want to, I'm wanting to produce. In the, the usual everyday run of the mill, I will go over, uh, I have, uh, say, a, a concept that I want to uh, bring into a picture, I will sketch it out, usually doing multiple sketches of the same character until I get a good feel of that character, and then I'll, I will then begin to uh, strike a pose. Uh, in that way, I would first use my trusty marker and produce a basic sketch like so. So let's say we want him usually at this point I would I would you know use the marker to create a pose like such very basic uh, just getting in the general shape and form not worrying about detail at all and uh, the little detail that you see is merely to um, orient myself as I'm drawing to make sure to keep uh, atomically sound the proportions. Uh, that's usually the only reason I ever put in anything extra, like the, as you can see, the muscle detail. It allows me to make sure that uh, he's not doing uh, poses that are impossible, because then I, at this point I can see very, uh, very easily what is and isn't possible for him to do. So let's say I wanted instead to, um, I use control Z to undo constantly. It uh, makes it easy rather than coming up here and pushing the undo button, which you can do. I just find it saves time to use hotkeys. So uh, very important uh, hotkeys. Also, uh, for the most part, when I'm first doing a sketch, I will, I will find a, a width in the brush that I am comfortable with uh, and then I will work on with that brush uh, for the entirety of the sketch. Let's at this point at least. Now let's say I have the the full sketch done. I will then lighten up that sketch or I may even change the shade which is uh, common. Yeah, You do it in traditional art you do sketches in different colors. So one way of doing that is to create a second layer over here to um, use the bucket and do say a blue uh, and flood fill then switch that to overlay and now you've changed the color of your sketch marks to blue, light blue. And now you can go back over that with another layer, a brand new one, and be able to distinctly see what is and isn't that next layer. Um, many artists do this. Uh, I, for one, rarely do it. What I'll tend to do is lighten the layer to, say, 30%. Go back over it with a darker layer, like so. Now, I have another hotkey that I use uh, specifically for the mouse I have. 
it is a mouse with two buttons on the side uh, where your thumb goes and I have uh, put these uh, to the hotkeys where I can increase and decrease the size of the brush. Now Paint Tool Sci already has uh, implemented a fantastic system for hotkeys which I, I hopefully uh, as time goes on I, I become more adjusted to using it. But let's see if I can find out where it is. Uh, keyboard and shortcuts. As you can see it's right here so you can set um, set you want what you want it to be and I set it to the two keys on my mouse because for the most part I usually um, touch only my mouse and my tablet now if you haven't noticed I zoom in and out a ton uh, it's just how I draw in fact the way that I move around the screen is merely by zooming in and out constantly so I rarely use these buttons to move on the the keypad here. I merely use the zoom in and zoom out. So my mouse is very important to me when I'm drawing. Mouse in one hand and tablet in the other. And since I'm left-handed, that uh, it works for me. <laughs> All right, so we have the the basic character. Um, I may go back over this and put in more details. Let's say we want to give him I don't know, let's 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 play around. Let's make him a masked character with a uh, very angular mask. Even at this point, I, I'm more trying to produce a, uh, a general look of what he's going to be, rather than a detailed uh, picture. And as you can see, I'm still use, using the same uh, marker to create the sketch. I haven't changed. Just a new layer, uh, setting the, the last layer. Uh, to a lighter and I, I've also decreased the uh, the width of the brush strokes so that I can have a little more detail uh, as time progresses I tend to create uh, thinner and thinner brushes for sketches so again all I'm trying to do at this point is create basically the shape that I want the character to be. If I have an idea, I'll implement it at this point and uh, see if I like the way it looks. Usually, I usually I like it because um, I'll go back and anything I don't like, I'll do my best to incorporate to create a new element in the artwork that I would maybe not have done um, cognitively, but uh, but end up looking pretty cool so I keep it. So uh, that's one thing that I've learned to do um, because of traditional ink art. Um, you, there's no such thing as mistakes when you're using a pen. There are only uh, new new ways to draw the character. So you're always using your mistakes and incorporating it into your artwork, which I find helps me in every avenue of my my art. All right. So at this point, we have a general idea of what the character will look like. Very rough, but uh, we'll be using this more so as time goes on and uh, make it a little more refined. We just want the shape, really. Not looking for a polished picture yet. A 
a lot of times the reason I um, I draw so messy for the sketches is a lot of times um, artists will take those me messy sketches and see new lines, new possibilities that they uh, that they can incorporate into the artwork through all the the mess. They can say, "Oh, that might look cool." That I can kind of see some some ideas in all those lines, and they will. That's why I I think so many artists prefer the messy, sketchy look because it leaves it open for the mind to imagine certain things while the more polished um, removes removes all uh, creativity. It uh, forces you to see it as the artist has created it to be. Alright, so at this point we have another sketch. Now for me usually this is a good enough but um, I might go back over and add some more to it uh, if I wanted more detail. But at this point, what I will do is switch over to the marker. Because it doesn't have the rounded edges, it's very, very sharp. I will then take and begin adding shayer, uh, layers of shade to give volume to the character so I can begin making turning the 2d sketch into a 3d image now it's a little different um, for um, 2d artwork versus uh, uh, what I'm going to call 3d artwork even though it's technically still 2d um, but uh, difference between doing line art and um, and ink like uh, In this this example, where it's it's just lines, there is no 3D uh, element to it. And uh, what I am doing now, I wonder if I have an example here. I don't believe I do. And 3D art, I guess this is an example, uh, not a great one, but. Uh, but art with shadows and such, shadows and lighting. So what I'll do is uh, keep uh, keep it pretty pretty controlled to just the character, and then I might go in and give the background some volume as well, and overall shadow. And I'm not worrying about trying to keep in lines with the character because uh, in 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 actuality uh, this may affect how I want to uh, shade the character. Usually though I will continue to shade them because you can always lighten them up later on. I prefer adding light rather than adding shadows because I find it uh, it makes more sense to me as an artist. Again every artist is different and uh, many prefer to add shadows to their artwork. Now I might go back and uh, go into specific parts of the character and add different elements and uh, I mean different uh, shades to the the character themselves so as to produce a uh, distinct details that uh, differentiate from the rest of it um, again, at this point, I'm not I'm not too worried about uh, staying in the lines. I'm just interested in getting the feel of the character down. When I make mistakes, just use erase. For the most part, I'm still on marker. Uh, and actually, uh, for the majority of my artwork, I will use only the two markers, this, the very sharp and the very thin, as well as intermittently uh, using the watercolor to do this, to soften and smooth out sketches, like so. But for now, I will avoid doing that because the I find that it actually gives me uh, a certain amount of uh, more lines to create things I didn't see before if it's messy. 
you can call it uh, controlled mess. <laughs> I have no idea what's in the background, but uh, we'll add to it, I guess. I'm thinking uh, spaceship, down spaceship, or or some kind of uh, futuristic building. And every layer that I do something in the background, I will go back through and add another color to the character to make him more distinct than his surroundings because the camera is focused on him rather than his surroundings. Now it's important that there is tone to your whole picture. Uh, again I usually add shadow before I worry about adding uh, light because light is the final thing that brings detail to the world and again I use if I need to soften lines I will use the watercolor as you see alright so at this point we have a a toned picture and I I would uh, for the most part I'd continue toning it down until I have the the effect that I'm looking for And perhaps at this point I might go in and combine layers so I can keep the uh, the amount of layers down uh, because if you don't you can end up with thousands of layers which is a mess I try to keep certain things such as shading uh, and line work uh, separate However, I will join the two line works together to make just one and name it Sketch. Ta da! Call this Shadow Overlay Base. Now, let's see. Perhaps we should add a tiny bit of light in the sky to create a kind of cool contrast effect. Again, just using one one tool. Contrast effect. I'll turn that down a bit, throw that down, add it to that. Now what I might do is go back over the artwork and perhaps add another layer of lighting to uh, tone back up the main character this allows me to solidify uh, little gaps in the armor so that I might work with those later on again still messy now here's another trick that I, I do if I am doing this but I want it to be less stagnant and 2D I will go back through and turn it into a shading effect so let me really fast finish this chest plate and show you what I mean by that I'm also going to keep all those messy lines that are in the artwork to use later on and give it texture. Okay, so we have 
that effect. Now I have a erasing tool. I have a very harsh erasing tool that does very harsh lines. And then I have a soft erasing tool, which does rounded edges and and small amounts of shading. I mean, uh, erase instead of a very harsh, it's all gone. And then I might go back through and erase a bit of the highlights that I had added to give this 3D effect. And make it more uh, more vivid where the light is more prevalent. And then I might tone it down a bit until I'm happy with the way that it looks. And uh, I'll continue to do that as throughout the picture. And sometimes I might go back and use the other erase to erase other parts, like so. Soft erase again. Tone it down. Voila. And uh, and just keep doing that. Um, switch over maybe to my other marker and start adding a little more controlled lighting effects. Like so. Always based on um, the edges and where the light's going to probably end up being more so than... Oops, and I messed that up. I try to do these on separate layers and then add them to each other so that I can uh, adjust them overall. I am constantly making new layers even for the smallest of uh, smallest of changes. I rarely work on the same layer of something I'm happy with until I'm happy with the next part. But as you can see time goes on I add more and more um, I might go in maybe with this produce a harsher line uh, no no okay, this is probably gonna be more what I want anyways and add the perhaps the dynamic lighting more so along the edges And as time goes on, um, the picture will become more and more soft because I will clean up uh, parts that were messy before and bring more detail to the scribbles that, uh, that are everywhere in the artwork at this point. As you can see, that gives the lighting effects. I might go back in like this and give highlights in the armor. where the light's going to be more uh, shine off of the edges of the armor more. It's all a matter of uh, looking at it and saying, oh, that looks, that looks right, I guess. I might do this, very messy, but then go back through and soften it up, like so. Gives a nice little effect, I guess. Uh, Maybe soft erase the edges a bit to where it's not as harsh. No, not quite. The undo tool is a fantastic thing, but it's important not to totally rely on it. And it's always important to go back to 
good old-fashioned traditional artwork where you can't undo things because it keeps you in that state of mind to think well instead of undoing let's incorporate which I, I think makes your artwork much more interesting so yeah now here's an example of using the airbrush which I love to do for smooth highlights uh, let's do a harsh erase here since that's not supposed to be connected to the mask that highlight gives a harsher edge and let's soft erase in between where I didn't mean to add as much highlight but uh, yeah so I might go like this an airbrush with a large airbrush and add highlights overall like so and the visor probably more so than any other spot let's uh let's erase all that to where I keep it only on the glass fantastic so you can you can get these fantastic uh effects let's say we wanted a a more pronounced highlight here uh, as if something was shining in on it I don't know maybe not but you you can see there's there's so many things that you can do with the art that give fantastic effects I tend to when I am um, coloring different things um, metallic versus organic you will you will find different uh, I, I, I will find that I'll, I'll color them differently like here I've been doing very harsh edges very uh, very um, sharp edges rather than say with organic uh, things I would l do less so uh, harsh uh, edges and and more soft maybe use my my this other marker more so because it has a softer edge to it and add light that way while with this I want to use my harsh marker more so and give it that uh, that non-organic look but uh, this is just an uh, an example of how I would I would begin to produce a, a, a piece of artwork uh, very quickly and how I uh, for the most part uh, draw uh, day to day maybe go through and and add softer uh, shadowing effects uh, with again with the uh, the airbrush as opposed to lighting effects I might go ahead and add uh, soft lighting to produce uh, glimmer effects I, I always when I'm actually doing high detailed um, light interacting with anything I always use my uh, my airbrush I just zoom in a lot <laughs> so again you would go through continuing to add the uh, effects of the light shining off different uh, parts maybe go through with your soft brush and this is why I try to keep the layers separate because I cannot go through and play with that like I wanted to let's create a separate layer airbrush again Uh, soft 
erase. There's the effect that we wanted. But yeah, just uh, continue, continuing to do this, continuing to produce a more and more um, concrete picture. Airbrush may be right here. And then go through and make a harsh, harshly erase where the light's not going to reflect. Go back through, add another layer, add the brighter highlight where the light's going to reflect even more so along the edge there. But yeah, you can you can see it, it starts to get cleaner as time goes on. And in fact I might even go through and combine the layers like this. Give it a second, it's loading. <laughs> this is the best part of uh, this program. It has a it said has a difficult time uh, rendering everything that you're doing. So in the end, um, I might get to a point where I want to um, make the layers one to where I can uh, go back through with my watercolor and perhaps sharpen up edges like so where they're not uh, so messy. Right now I'm using the water tool, which is great for smudging. Uh, and I can use that in this way to remove some of the, the messiness of it. Now here's an example of a time I might go back through and uh, use one of these other effects, like say the rust effect. I might go in and create a little blob there, like so, and find a good spot for it. Maybe rust up his, his armor a bit to where it looks like it has some, some cool uh, splatter effect on it from the dirt and grime. Go into the overlays, perhaps change it to shade lighten it up. Don't like the way that looks, so switch it back to normal. Normal looked okay. Go back through, add instead of that, add a light effect. You can see there's there's things that you can do and uh, you're going to want to spend more time with it so it doesn't look like this, but you can use those brushes to produce uh, different effects. Again, I wouldn't want the highlight in, in the crevasse or the, the darkening for that matter. But yeah, and you can produce interesting effects. Uh, for small details such as uh, uh, scrapes and scratches, I put the pen down to a very light, I mean a very small um, width and use the airbrush again. And then I would go through and make a complete mess where it looks like absolute garbage. <laughs> Tone it up. Harsh erase where I definitely don't want it to be at all. And then soft erase where the light's not going to reflect off the cuts as much. And then I might go back through and add the shadow of the the cuts and such. Again, not really paying too much attention to where I'm doing it. Just that uh, it's getting done. <laughs> uh, perhaps angle it a little more with the armor itself. Go back through. Harsh, ra harsh erase. Wow where I don't want it. Tone it up a bit. Soft erase where I want it less. And it might produce effects like that. 
And if I was really getting getting anal about the art, I might go in and zoom way in close along the cuts that I want to accent more. Add more highlight. Produce effects like so. And if you're not quite uh, satisfied with uh, how the the grime is looking, that's no no bother. We can just go through and create our own splatter effect. So I might go in like this and just create this really nasty blob. Let's say he got uh, maybe a little oil splatter or some kind of discoloration to his metal that uh, that's spreading out over that part right there. I might then take that, lighten it up like so, and we have a fantastic little effect that adds a little more life to the character. Maybe two-tone it and add a second effect. Maybe for this part I might uh, go in and actually do uh, use your pen because then it has these harsh fantastic lines using that we can use wonderfully for this kind of thing. Lighten that up. We're going to have to set this to overlay at this point because it's going to produce what we want. Um, and it might give it that nice little splatter look. And uh, again, you would incorporate this over the entire entirety of the the character, but uh, the end result is some kind of effect like this. So, uh, of course, if we really wanted to work on this, uh, I, I would I would work on this more the cracks and crevices here, like this, to darken those so that it's believable so maybe add uh, some even sharper cuts in the armor maybe with my airbrush because that's gonna produce a, a sharper sharper line course everything requires the two tones of light and dark and there you have a nice little cut in his armor and just like that you would uh, you would produce uh, a more and more clear representation of the armor itself um, again I might go back through at the very end once I'm done with everything I throw that over there combine the layers uh, you cannot combine overlay um, layers with with normal layers because uh, what you get is it turns it to a normal layer. For this case, it looks like it's fine, but sometimes it'll really mess up your picture. So you can't always combine the the images together, um, and I usually don't. Uh, for this video, though, we'll we'll do it. We'll we'll get a little a little. Uh, a little crazy. Lighten this up to match the light in the sky a bit. Water the color that in. So there's a nice clean contrast between the armor and the background. I might continue to do that throughout the the armor like so. We just want to smudge it to where there's no residual uh, sketches. Another thing you can do is you can go back, and this is probably this is what I actually do with most of my artwork. I go back to the sketch and begin to adjust that layer, and I adjust layers separately. But it's more time consuming, but it's cleaner and more effective, and produces a better result. But yeah, you can see um, you can see if this was this level across the entire T of the character it would look pretty cool uh, and at the very end what I might do is I might go ahead and say okay well I, I kinda want more 
more, oops, I want more shadow effect like this coming up from the sides here uh, produces a more interesting thing. A little, a little dirty, maybe soften that up a tad to be less splotchy. Maybe I want it a tad bit darker in the back. Like so. Watercolor that down. And then I want it to look like there's light shining from here. So I will take my airbrush and begin to add ray effects. Yeah, why not? And at this point, because I want the softer lines, I will use the airbrush. And I don't want them to be that noticeable, so we're going to tone it down like to there. Go over it again. Smooth it out using the watercolor. And there we have a little light effect there. And then back here over the horizon, we want it to look like there is light coming in over that horizon there. So maybe add a, a little light effect coming up from there, like so. Maybe another one for the rays. You got to be careful about how many rays you put in uh, because sometimes they can make the art look messy uh, in the end. But uh, but it's it's always important to keep in mind that we always see when there's a harsh contrast or the light is very piercing. We can always see rays. We just sometimes block them out and we don't notice them as much. But uh, that's why you would lighten the rays like I'm doing right now to where if you looked very carefully you could notice them but for the most part it looks okay. And I might then go over this and add screen tones um, you know if it was a cleaner picture I would go over it and add screen tones and and such. Um, I like to at the very end once uh, I have the picture, maybe even before I add all the illumination that you saw there, I like to go in and do an overlay and add the the color effects. So you want about the color that you you need and you overlay it. I usually do it with uh, markers like so. give it that little bit of color that it needs. Background's a little more brown. And of course you can you can if you work it with color all the way up to this point, you are actually probably better off because you have a little less of a headache to make sure that all the tones are correct. And uh, I want to actually give the whole the whole piece a, a bit of this color right here. Kind of a grimy look. Add a little more yellow to this part at least. Since this light's more likely going to be a yellow tint. Let's let's make it feel cool in the background. And maybe a light blue, grayish kind of effect to the skyline here. And the great thing about this is you can add the colors and I'd be a little more anal about the way that I'm adding them. Uh, 
if I wasn't uh, making sure that this is nice and fast. Let's make this very yellow. It's light here. Let's make that uh, green, like a deep kind of. Oh, airbrush, like a deep kind of darker green, a little gray. Try to keep the gray tones down because uh, if not, it gets a little oversaturated with that. And in many regards, um, you hurt yourself adding the colors later, but you get some pretty cool effects sometimes adding them, waiting until this point to add them. Tone of the armor, maybe a little more blue, but yeah, that there we go. We haven't, you know, a picture, but that's how I use Paint Tool Sci. Uh, I find it to be a fantastic tool. The um, the overall um, effects and such are are nice. The only thing that I have against it is the the stagnant uh, brushes and the fact that those do not rotate with the brush stroke, which would make it fantastic. But uh, that's how I use Paint Tool Sci. Uh, I thank you for watching. I hope this has been um, useful and helpful in some regard, and uh, I hope that, uh, that at least it was entertaining. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Peace.